Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. For many reasons, I decided to make this uh, lecture public because it's very important. Let's do it. In many studies, it has been shown that eyeball uh, guessing ejection fraction or visual uh, uh, guessing ejection fraction or eyeballing ejection fraction, whatever it's called, it is as accurate as uh, 3D echo for the ejection fraction, and even many times better than Simpson, but only in those has enough knowledge and uh, a good eye experience. Now let's see, on this uh, lecture, I try to give those experience and trips and tricks that you can, it can help you to guess ejection fraction visually almost accurate. For uh, eyeballing ejection fraction, we have to first keep four principles. First of all, we shouldn't uh, judge based on the one view. Always we have to get at least three view. Three view, those including apical four, two, three. Apical four and three is much better than uh, apical four and two. So those three is very important, but my recommendation get it in six uh, view and guess uh, ejection fraction uh, that include PZAX2 and PLAX. For one most important reason, I notice many apical tree view are really uh, reverse apical five. Just some people, uh, they don't notice that. Some take even some cardiologists. But in the plaques, you can say this is really plaques. That is the reason, and because of the some kind of the wall motion abnormality, we can miss very easy. So I recommend eyeball guessing ejection fraction being done with viewing all those uh, six at least uh, view. Here, for example, as you can see here, this is one plaques, the classic plaques. You can see squeezing is good, anterior mitral valley fled almost kissing the septum. You may guess, oh, okay, this is ejection fraction normal. But if you look at the apical windows, four and go back to two, between four and two, or off access two, you can see uh, apex is akinetic. So right away over there, 15% ejection fraction drop. So never judge only by at one uh, view, window. Make sure your image is not off axis. Here we have a patient in the, didn't have subcostal uh, apical and plaques, just off axis on the four chamber. Here, based on this, if you want to judge based on this, ejection fraction over 60, as almost kissing, blah, blah, blah. But I can say this is off axis because a very easy apex moving in and those landmark are not correct. When we get correct, access, you can see here, ejection fraction is less than 35, something like that. So make sure your image is not off access. If you go off access, 100 person, you are overestimating or underestimating something. And the last one, uh, not last one, third one, is always create a 3D imaging of the heart functioning. Because as you know, heart is a 3D structure. Our study is 2D. You have to put all those three at least, apical four, two, and three together and create in your mind exactly how that uh, cone-shaped structure LV pumping. And the last one, principle that you have to keep in your mind when you go uh, guessing is that make sure is that there is any uh, motion abnormality or not because the technique and rules for having uh, wall motion abnormality or not is different when we call the wall motion abnormality it means localized if it's general general hypokinetic that is goes to the uh, category of the non-wall motion abnormality just I'm going to start right now. So based on that explanation, we have two group of patients or cases. First, the group that they don't have any localized wall motion abnormality. In these case, cases, 
we use three parameters that uh, one of them is EPSS, E point septal separation, how much anterior mitral valve uh, leaflet go close to the septum, as you can see here, kissing. If we don't have mitral stenosis, left ventricle dilatation, and left atrial enlargement, this is a good uh, parameter for guessing ejection fraction at least will be normal. Just keep in your mind, we don't have wall motion abnormality. Another one, and the most important part, is left ventricle, ventricular internal diameter at diastole and systole. How much it diameter change, in other words, how much the left ventricle squeeze, and here decreasing diameter means squeezing. For that purpose, we have divided left ventricle in three uh, zones. One of them close to the apex, the border between the apical segment and mid segment. Another is at the basal, and the third one at the mid. As you can see, these three lines all equal size, and almost from here to here, almost the interventricular diameter is almost equal. Here a little decrease, but it's almost we take it as equal. As you can notice, normal heart function squeezing and decreasing diameter, intraventricular diameter, is different in each uh, region. At the basal is less, mid a little more, at the ap apical region is highest one. And when we are guessing, we have to focus on this inter internal diameter in this, all those three. If it's on the mid and uh, apical decrease and the plaques, more than one centimeter is normal, more than one and a half centimeter is over 60. If at the apex is almost kissing each other, over 65 and even 70%. Uh, you can use this scale at the rise of the screen as a centimeter. You can compare how much is decreased the diameter between these two dots is one centimeter. That is the most important parameter for eyeball guessing, how much left ventricle squeezing. And the third one is MAPC, or mitral plane excursion systolic excursion, mitral annulus uh, plane systolic excursion, or MAPC, that we have lateral medial. The normal is should be about eight millimeter, this annulus move forward, and here more than 10 millimeter. If it's more than one centimeter, it's normal. If it's go one and a half centimeter, it's over 60%. As you can see here, that the apex, this uh, squeezing or intraventricular diameter at the apex is more than 50%. In that case, you can see over 65 at least. Here we have EF 55 to 60%. As you can see, EPS almost normal goes close to the septum. Uh, internal diameter decrease uh, more than one centimeter. You can see even, uh, even sometimes go off axis because papillary muscles show up. But you can see is normal. And here squeezing at apex, squeezing and diameter decrease very well at the mid two. At the apex, uh, popularly muscle short axis, we can see this is squeezing almost more than one centimeter. The thickening almost normal, more than 30 percent. In apical tree is the same as plaques. You can see we don't have any wall motion abnormality. At the here EPSS, uh, you can see much better, completely kissing. But this. A squeezing at this level is not hyperdynamic, it's normal kinetic, normal. So you can say this is a normal ejection fraction, not hyperdynamic. So is EF 55 to 60%. Here we have EF 50 to 55%. As you can see here, EPSS is almost normal in one moment, kissing the septum. So that one is not helping too much. But here you can see at this diameter, a little decreased, doesn't too much squeezing in, and here too, 
compared to the normal has at least you have to expect to squeeze one centimeter this scale if you look at this this one doesn't squeeze too much this one doesn't squeeze too much but close to the normal here the same as you can see squeezing at these two level a little decrease apex is almost normal and uh, mapsy is a little drop not too much but it still is uh, around maybe i give it eight cent eight millimeter so a little decrease so i can give it very easy 50 percent to this patient not 55 i give it 50 between 50 to 55 usually we give them five percent range of the ejection fraction for visual uh, guessing here we have uh, 45 to 50 as you can we go at, again those three parameter epss doesn't help us almost normal uh, map c dropped significantly lateral is not bad but medial a little dropped more and if you look at here squeezing in internal uh, diameter of ventricle in apical two and apical four and apical three as you can see here is between four uh, three and five you can see tricuspid a little show up i am not going judge based on that too much anyway here squeezing at the basal and mid uh, significantly drop compared to the normal and you can see here the same here we don't have squeezing at this level and at this level and the apex even a little decrease but it still is uh, acceptable but decrease so if i want to give ejection fraction on this 45 yeah 45 to 48 or 50 that will be good here we have uh, ejection fraction 40 to 45 as you can see here even moving shaking most probably even that is a problem with this case unfortunately it doesn't go to that category of the no wall motion abnormality this patient have wall motion abnormality you can guess we have a little hypokinetic at the septum and inferior wall hypokinetic not akinetic and even even here you can guess we have hypokinetic and anterior wall but generally speaking uh, based on the uh, map c and here as you can see even a little sclerotic but doesn't move too much toward the septum uh, anterior metrobably flat here you can see squeezing at this apical too it looks like not bad but when you compare with the three and four chamber you can see squeezing at this level all the level significantly decreased so ejection fraction based on especially this three and four chamber it makes sense give it uh, 40 to 45. here we have uh, ejection fraction 35 to 40 percent as you can see uh, EPSS is not bad actually kissing the septum here the same kissing the septum so we cannot judge based on that but about the MAPC as you can see is very move toward the apex means longitudinal movement longitudinal strain on this case if you measure it goes strain echo you can say okay this is longitudinal the drop significantly is abnormal and maybe a few millimeter go for, uh, toward the apex and beside of that uh, radial contraction that is diameter almost significantly decreased is apex a little is still keep it but the close to the third one and basal and the mid significantly decreased and doesn't squeeze at all too much the little still we have high, general hypokinesia you can see general hypokinesia except the apex you can see still normal kinetic but here we have a general hypokinetic of the heart and ef is 30 to 35 to 40. i couldn't find a, a case that has a ejection fraction 30 to 35 percent without wall motion abnormality in wall motion abnormality i give the uh, example of that here we have ejection fraction 25 to 30 uh, percent all of those compromised uh, epss dropped completely here doesn't uh, contract at all in this area 
doesn't decrease any a little here at the apex keep it but if you can see at the basal and mid diameter doesn't much too much especially apex is still a little decrease even go a little off axis and in short axis you can see the diameter between the ostal and systole less than a five millimeter decrease so in that case you can say easy this is ejection fraction 25 to 30 percent even a little uh, mapsy decrease too is not but it's not normal but still there is some five millimeter something like that here we have ef uh, 20 to 25 percent and as you can see heart almost shaking not uh, contraction a little contraction here and a little there but here you can see the diameter squeezing almost significantly drop except the apical is a little off axis you can see rv here apical for shaking not this diameter doesn't contract here you can see on short axis and here this diameter maybe a few millimeter decrease so ejection fraction 20 to 25 makes sense here we have ejection fraction below 20 percent as you can see none of those movement you can see on this just shaking some bouncing or shaking a little because of the just a little contractility of left atrium maybe uh, give that impression as you can see here uh, almost few millimeter in all dimension decrease is squeezing here almost nothing happened even has wall motion abnormality unfortunately you cannot guess but that is uh, and when it comes to this level almost always they have some wall motion abnormality here I brought all of them together in four of them here from over 60 to 45 50 just uh, pause it lay there and come back and see many times check all of them until your eyes get used to it and when you see okay this is this amount ejection fraction here are the rest of the ejection fraction category uh, from 40 to 20 percent you can check it out the below one is belong to each of them this one is belong to that and so on all of them now let's go see how we can guess what technique and tips we have for the when we have wall motion abnormality another group of cases are when we have some wall motion abnormality just don't forget when we have wall motion abnormality especially when we have the synchrony the desynchrony itself uh, drop ejection fraction five to ten percent because the effective forward blood flow drop even the heart may be wall they move but it bounce between the wall uh, the some part of the blood so it will not be effective one of those effect is that the other uh, is uh, we have to know each is part of the heart has different uh, role in the contraction of the heart the longitudinal circumferential uh, and all those strain that you learn so there are effect in each of those part when involved the effect on the ejection fraction will be different since we have the most of the cases uh, of the CAD of wall motion abnormality involve LAD let's go first uh, get the general rules for that one then I give for all of them uh, as you can see here in this case we have the patient LAD apex is akinetic anterior wall almost severe hypokinetic or you can call it akinetic base at uh, this two is not bad normal kinetic but the mid is severe hypokinetic or akinetic generally 
if the apex is akinetic means anterior wall is akinetic to apex akinetic in that case the ejection fraction if the other part are normal functioning normal kinetic ejection fraction drop at least 15 to 20 percent very easy if apex it is impossible if the other part is normal kinetic but apex is akinetic ejection fraction go over 40. if it's hyperkinetic the other part hyperkinetic that in can go up to the 40 to 45 percent if any part of that beside of the apex akinetic other part is hypo or akinetic you have to take 10 at least 10 percent from uh, ejection fraction too for example in this case beside of the apical akinetic mid is almost akinetic too so totally in this case patient at least 25 percent of the ejection fraction dropped and with measurement apical 4 2 i did many times and it was accurate 30 percent so it makes sense beside of that still you use those other parameters that with the cases we don't have wall motion abnormality still we can use those uh, taps v sorry map c uh, epss how much is squeezing inside here middle and apical part all all of them help us but having that general rules is not bad idea for not making any mistake for other wall if a wall for example septal is akinetic you have to take at least 15 percent from ejection fraction so patient with the septal akinetic ejection fraction will be below 45 around 40 something or lateral wall the same for each segment uh, you can take it uh, if only one segment involved you can take it five percent ejection fraction so if you measure unless the patient has hyperdynamic the other part very hyperdynamic and compensate that small part otherwise if it's normal kinetic just one segment involved three to five percent ejection fraction will drop i'm going to try to in other lectures and maybe in case study prepare some wall motion abnormality with 3d measurement make it more accurate and bring it up and upload it and you can see exactly in each of those wall motion abnormality and segment how much is changed maybe we can have a general better rule for those cases that wall motion abnormality have uh, we are done don't forget your uh, comment any you had some question or anything you thought maybe i made mistake i will be appreciate if you uh, mention it up to the next time have a wonderful time